Hi, good evening. So, uh, in this episode, what we're going to do is continue rebuilding the forks of the A70 Lightning. So, what we've got laid out in front here are all the components. I previously uh, stripped them down, purchased some uh, new stanchions, some new springs, as one of the springs was missing and the remaining one was wrong. I've cleaned up the two fork legs, uh, one of which still has the last uh, US uh, DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, sticker, effectively the MOT certificate, which is from uh, 79 and uh, 80 for the state of uh, Virginia. And I think that's probably when the bike was last on the road. Um, it was re-imported in 1990 in a bit of a mess, as you've seen from previous photographs, and had, uh, has never been registered in the UK, uh, although I do have the, uh, the Nova certificate. So, um, as you can see, we've got all the components. We've got the um, internal damper rods and uh, shuttle valves. I've cleaned up both the bottom fork legs, as I've stated, and also I've already replaced uh, one of the uh, the oil seals as well and uh, in this episode I'll be putting a, a an oil seal, a replacement oil seal in this fork leg too. Um, now just to mention that the oil seals that I've got are these uh, which I bought as a job lot from a fairly well known British bike um, specialist and these are in fact the, uh, the older type of uh, oil seals where uh, there is no uh, rubber uh, surface on the exterior rim of the seal which um, was introduced on later seals to uh, prevent uh, oil weeping by. Uh, however it's pretty easy to uh, to rectify that by just smearing uh, silicone around the, uh, the outer edge here before you actually insert the seal and bearing in mind the number of miles that this is going to do on a regular basis then I don't think that's going to be uh, a problem. Um, so, I've got to crack on and first of all fit the seal, but also there's another thing that I wanted to point out that I've noticed in that looking at the damper rods and uh, shuttle valves, um, I don't know whether you can see it on, on this very well, but I've noticed that on uh, one of these, then uh, the bottom lock nut for the shuttle valve appears to be a bit more raised than, than the other. If I hold both of these up so you can see, you'll see that the distance between the shuttle valve and the top of the knot on this one is much less than that one. And if we look closer at the extended one, we'll see that, you might not be able to see that too well, but in fact what's happened is that when this has been built, the, uh, the washer isn't seated properly and therefore not the knot has been tightened up against the washer instead of in, inside the uh, washer and onto uh, the valve itself. Uh, so we'll need to, uh, to rectify that, that first, which is a pretty easy job to do. Um, so uh, let's get on and uh, sort that out now first. We've got the vice nearby, it's pretty easy to do it, I think. In my opinion, I, I think these have been uh, never been stripped. I think they're original and I think that's a fault from the factory itself which obviously wouldn't have been picked up at, uh, at QA. Let me just give you um, a better view of me messing about over here on the vise. There we go. Tools. Hopefully this will be a case of just slackening the, this off slightly, reseating, there it goes, reseating the washer, OK, 
Okay, so the bottom nut stroke screw has loosened off, uh, but it hasn't taken the pressure off that washer so we can reseat it. So the shuttle valve itself might actually be uh, screwed onto the rod. So let me have a fiddle with this and I'll, I'll bring you back. Okay, uh, that's that little job uh, done. Two second job. The actual shuttle valve itself is screwed on the uh, rod, so undid that. And now we'll see uh, that the uh, the nuts are in the same position on uh, on each of the damper rods. And actually, the washer is a uh, is a loose fit, fit and probably acting as some sort of damper valve in its own right, as it's uh, as it has holes in it. So uh, that may have affected the fork leg action a, a little, but I don't think too uh, too much. But anyway, it's something that uh, just needed a bit of correction, which is all done now. So that's that done. The so next thing is I'm going to uh, apply some uh, sealer uh, to uh, the rim of the fork leg before then uh, pressing in a seal, which is a fairly straight uh, forward job. Uh, so let me do that and. Uh, We'll come back again and then we'll start to reassemble the forks. Okay, back again, and that's the uh, seal pressed in, new seal pressed into the second stanchion. Obviously, making sure that the seal's the, uh, the right way up, i.e., that the seal spring is on the lower lip, not the upper lip. And there we are, that's nice and flush. As I say I put a silicon sealer around the outside of the seal itself to prevent any seepage there, which was a slight problem that they realised um, early on in the uh, first production runs in 19, uh, 1971. Um, and of course these forks are uh, common to the whole range except for uh, the Triumph uh, Daytona, which I think was the only legacy model to uh, keep the, uh, the forks from uh, 1970. Right, next job then is to uh, reassemble rest, the rest of the forks and the first thing you've got to do is put the damper rods inside, back inside the uh, the new stanchions, which is fairly, fairly straightforward. And that just requires us to get the stanchion, um, make sure you've got the correct end, i.e. the one that's not chamfered, the other end that goes into the top fork yoke is chamfered, uh, the unchamfered end and basically screw these in ComSat. Now what we're going to have to do is make sure that we don't lose that damping rod and also when the time comes to fit the uh, the slider onto this, this is when we've got to uh, be careful of seating this doughty washer properly on the inside so we can screw this in from the outside of the leg as it screws into uh, to this bottom hole here. Uh, so we've got to make sure, <laughs> I nearly lost it, that we unscrew the uh, Allen screw. We'll put some sealer, probably some silicon sealer around the doughty washer so it sticks to the end of the damping rod uh, so that it doesn't actually move when we slide, slide the leg into the slider and then screw the the Allen key in from the uh, from the far end of the slider. So I'll just um, complete uh, screwing the damper rods uh, in and torquing those up on both of these, and then we'll go on to uh, inserting the uh, the stanchions into the slider. Um, in the meantime, as well, I'll get some silicon sealer on these uh, on these doughty washers on the end here. Uh, to stop them moving and let, we'll let that set a little before we then uh, reassemble the forks totally. Okay, bring it back in a sec. Okay, here we go then. So we've got the uh, damper rods screwed back in. We've got the doughty washers seated on the end of the damper rods and encouraged to stay there with a bit of uh, silicon sealer that's cured a little bit now. So we'll go ahead and insert the stanchions into uh, the slider. Already cleaned up uh, the inside of the slider. 
Make sure the seal is nice and clean, the brand new seal anyway. These were cleaned up earlier. And what we'll do at the same time is we'll use some uh, ATF fluid, which is the uh, standard fork fluid for these forks anyway, just to uh, provide a little bit of, uh, of lubrication. We've got the uh, Allen screws at the ready, 7th, uh, 7.32nd. All the screws are all ready to go. So this is going to be a bit of a messy job, uh, but can't be helped. So basically, fork leg in position. Just get you in a bit of, bit of a better position. Something like that. Um, turn this around because it's going in that way around. Provide a bit of lubrication. Leg. And basically insert very slowly so we don't try and dislodge that doughty washer. Gently through the seal. Gently slide her in. And turn her around. Turn the torch in and see if we can determine that the washer hasn't moved. I can see the uh, the thread. I can see the silicon seal out on the inside, and I can see the inner rim of the doughty washer. So we'll push this a bit further in, like that. I heard the damper rod engage at the bottom of the fork. Slide it. Still in position. So I'll tentatively insert. The Allen screw gently. We've got a cork thread and the damper rod. So that means now we just need to insert the special tool in the other end. We can compress the fork, damp it, make it a bit shorter and more manageable. We put the special tool in, catch the top of the damper rod, effectively this is just a long screwdriver, there it is engaged. Pick up the arms, the Allen key off the floor. Re engage the Allen key. Sorry, it's not a very good view. Re engage the Allen key into the Allen screw. There we go. Keep the other end engaged and tighten up. Now the good thing about the end of these fork legs is that with the uh, cap stud still in place you can use those to actually lock the allen key when you tighten up from the other end. This is nice and tight already. That's beautiful, it's not even moving. Okay. Okay, and um, we've got the Allen key well inserted, seated, tightened.
rebounding. Nice. Okay, feels good, nice and smooth. Lubed up a little. Spring goes in. Like so. And the new caps and washers can go on the end temporarily for now. I hate this bit. Because uh, we've obviously got to fill with the appropriate amount of ATF, which is actually informantly told on the on the top of the cap, 190 cc's. But this lot's got to come back off again shortly anyway when we insert these into the yolks. Several attempts this. To find the start of the thread. You just gotta be patient so you don't damage it. No there. There we go. We're in. Match is on. Make sure we get plenty of threads on it so it doesn't strip. There we go. One fork leg, nice and smooth. Test it on the floor. Beautiful. Oh, one thing I've forgotten. Damn it. The dust cap. Off she comes again. Okay, not forgetting the dust cap. Just slide that down, and that's just a push fit on. Yeah, like that. Clips into place. Then we can put the cap back on. Again, being very patient to find the thread so we don't damage your strip. Well, straight on. That's a first. And then we'll screw that down just loosely for now, but on plenty of threads so we don't damage the threads or strip against the tension of the spring because that's obviously got to come off again when we insert the forks into uh, the yokes. Then on this A70 model, we've got the uh, clock mounts uh, held on by that nut two on the top of the yokes. And obviously, we've got to actually fill this with the appropriate amount of. Uh, Fork oil, which is uh, usual ATF, and as the uh, cat nuts tell us, it's uh, 190 cc's. Right, simple as that. Okay, uh, job done. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you again soon.